Hi everybody, welcome to the second episode of The Morning Mug. Before we get started, I just want to send a sincere thank you to everybody who watched the first episode. By the time I went to bed, there were over 120 views. I know y'all didn't watch the whole thing all the time. That's totally fine, but that just still means a lot that so many people are, are clicking. So thank you very, very much. Feel free to leave me comments in uh, the YouTube the YouTube, or you can uh, send me something on the Twitter. Um, I'm at Ms underscore Hetrick, H-E-T-R-I-C-K. So today is Tuesday, the 17th of March. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I am not wearing green, but I don't have to, to appreciate St. Patrick's Day. Uh, please feel free to do some online Googling to learn a little bit more about St. Patrick himself. I'm interested to see, I need to do some digging on this, about some of the major St. Patrick's Day parades. The first one was held in 1601, not obviously in the U.S., but some of the big parades in, in Boston and Chicago. I'm interested to see how they're handling it because of uh, some of the social distancing provisions that we're all involved in. This day in history, the year 2000, uh, Julia Roberts, the actress, first female to collect $20 million for a film role. That was for Aaron Brockovich. Great movie. I would not watch it with young children. There's some content and some language. But based on a true story of a woman, Aaron Brockovich, a young mother who was never taken very seriously because of her personal appearance and um, her, her lack of education, but before you know it, she's going to be a, a paralegal, like a legal assistant with a law firm on the largest class action lawsuit our country had seen to that point. Outstanding film. Highly recommended. Going over to today's weather. Um, today in our South Central Pennsylvania region, it is raining. That's one of the reasons why I couldn't get up. And that's probably why I've had to take multiple takes to get this morning mug taken care of um, because it's rainy and it's cold. Um, cloudy and rainy till the afternoon, high only of 58 in the overnight hours. Of course, the rain's going to stop in the afternoon, but the overnight hours, we're getting close to freezing. So please bundle up when you take your dog out. Okay. So uh, perfect day to stay in. Honestly, it's a good day to stay in. So some things for you to do, some things you can do here on this, this rainy day. Some schools are pushing out online activities for my big spring bulldogs. Sure, go ahead. Those activities are, are they're there for you. Don't push yourself. Your priority is taking care of you and your family, period. That is your priority. Again, like I said yesterday, take some time to adjust to our new norm. That's absolutely okay. I know that, that I worked hard. I'm sure other teachers worked hard too to try to put some things together that are enjoyable. That, that, that's not busy work. Something that would be beneficial for you. So some things you can do. Also, this connects to a birthday. Um, happy 65th birthday to the wonderful Gary Sinise. Happy birthday, Gary. So something I didn't show you on the tour yesterday. My students know I'm a huge fan of Tom Hanks. Huge fan. Tom Hanks and dear Rita Wilson tested positive for COVID-19. Um, so sending all the positive healing vibes to them. Um, but what I have in my classroom, I made this at a paint night. Okay, I'm, I'm not like obsessive fangirl status. I have a healthy respect for him as an artist. Okay. But if I ever met Tom or his wife, Rita Wilson, I would probably squeal um, and drool all over myself. But anyway, so this particular thing has all the different roles that Tommy Tom has has played. So I don't think I'm going to get to the point in the morning mug that we have a daily connection to Tom Hanks, but you never know. So I said that because I forgot this on the tour. And now going back to Gary Sinise. 65 years old today, please take a minute and hop on over to his website, GarySiniseFoundation.org. Since 9-11, uh, his organization has worked really, really hard to support the families of fallen soldiers and also soldiers who have been injured in the line of duty. From smart homes to more emergency relief funding, almost 500 concerts with the Lieutenant Dan Band. Awesome. Awesome, awesome guy. So that's something you can do here on your rainy day. Something else you can do. 
and here's my project. I am going to color. I feel like I'm lined up for the guillotine. Um, this is one of those sunshade things so your steering wheel doesn't get hot. Look at that. The whole thing is colorable. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. That being said, perfect transition. If you're a colorer person, Crayola. Crayola is where it's at. It's a Pennsylvania-based company in Easton. Yes, Crayola. I have some trivia about Crayola. What word is that? To me, that's crayon. I cannot say crayon because it's like rayon. I, crayons. Crayola crayons. Just saying. Sorry if my pronunciation drives you nuts, but I am who I am and I'm confident in myself. So here's a little bit of trivia. The original Crayola box, the original, original Crayola crayon box, how many colors were available and what were they? Give you a moment to think about it. The original Crayola crayon box, how many and what colors were they? The answer is eight, eight in the original Crayola box. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, and brown in the original Crayola box. The second one, three colors have been renamed because they've been considered politically incorrect. Three colors. One of them was Prussian blue. Another one was flesh. And the last one was Indian red. So tomorrow, if you tune into the morning mug, I'm going to start with what Prussian blue and flesh and Indian red turned into. Try not to Google it, okay? Let's, let's keep this old fashioned fun, okay? So you can color if you wanna color. One more thing that I've actually posted to some of my classes, and this is great for families to even work on together, through the Smithsonian Institution and also through the National Archives, you can go and be a historian and help with their transcription pro uh, projects. So some are printed documents that are not digitally searchable. Other ones are handwritten documents. Parents, this is a great way to teach your kids how to read cursive. It's wonderful. So you sit there on your computer and you transcribe. You can look at other people's transcriptions to approve them and then it gets added to their digital collections. So the public and, um, researchers have the opportunity to search these things. And that's actually really, we're realizing how important digital access to things actually is. So you can check out Gary Sinise's website. You can color, you can take a look at these transcriptions, transcription ideas, there you go. So many things to do. But um, I need to talk about today's mug. The mug of the day, right? Because it is the morning mug. And I want to see how long I can go without repeating. Here's today. Simple and straightforward. I was reminded as I was doing all this work yesterday, take a breather and keep it simple. Everything doesn't have to be bells and whistles and Pinterest ready. Not at all. Just be. Just relax. It's absolutely okay. Um, this is only day two of many. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So we've got it. Feel free to reach out on Twitter. Um, my students, feel free to send me an email if there's anything that you need. Please stay dry today, stay warm today. Behave, be good, be kind. Please continue to recycle and for the love of all things, keep washing your hands. All right, see you tomorrow.